Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Shelley Everly here. Today is Monday, January the 7th, 2019. It's 8 p.m. in New York, 5 p.m. in Los Angeles. It's after midnight, 1 a.m. in London. And if you're in Sydney, Australia, it's 12 noon. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for tuning in for yet another live stream recording of LOA Today and your daily dose of happy. And uh, we're happy to welcome back Shelley, who is uh, becoming a, a stalwart regular here on the program. And uh, <laughs> you, you came up with this topic without any hesitation, I have to, to say uh, to the audience, Shelley. I mean, you, you didn't think twice about it. You said, this is the topic that we got to discuss. Was there a reason for that? I got I to gotta ask you, what was it about? Um. <laughs> Um, honestly, it was a couple of days ago, I think, when I decided that, and I don't really remember what the reason was. I think, oh. <laughs> I, well, I just think that it's something that I, that I think about a lot, and I, um, kind of point out to people a lot when I'm, like, kind of mentoring people that are on different law of attraction groups and that sort of thing on Facebook. Um, right. I just, you know, when, when people say, you know, I've really been trying hard and I've been going through all the steps and I've been trying to feel good and everything. And I just keep getting pulled back and pulled back and pulled back. And it's like, there's something there that's pulling you back. And it's usually your unconscious that's keeping you in your safe little place. And, and, you know, you don't know how to handle more money or you don't know how to handle that's not your safe place. So yeah, is that um, the way too. Yep. Yeah. And so, okay, so well, it's a good topic you picked, I have to say, because like you say, it's at the heart of what everybody is trying to um, deal with when it comes to being a deliberate creator. So yeah, kudos to you for coming up with it. And I'm sure we're going to have a lot to talk about. This is a and a So if you are listening to the live stream, and I'm already seeing people saying hello, 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 Efine, hello, Rosina, and the others are popping into. Um, if you're listening to the live stream and you'd like to ask a question along the lines of what our topic is, or even something that seems unrelated, which is fine. I mean, we like talking about anything related to the yeah. law of action. You know, start popping those questions in there because um, we're, we're really looking forward to it. Hi, Brian. Well, yes, I see that you're there, too. Good to see you, too. Thanks for dropping in. Um, the topic of, of blocks which is something we were actually discussing yesterday. We, we've given it quite a bit of uh, airplay lately. Um, which is understandable considering how, how broad the topic is. It covers so many areas of life. I wanted to ask you, you made a comment. I don't even remember if you, I don't, I don't know if you remember what the comment was that you made last night about this. Do you remember? But it, it, it seemed to me that it was just like right on track with what we were talking about. Um, no, I don't remember. Don't remember? Okay. <laughs> I'm not really sure myself. I remember that you said something. I was hoping you'd remember. I didn't have the transcript, but oh well, I figured I'd take a shot. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, well, let, let's uh, let's start this way because I don't see, oh, hello, Colleen. Um, I don't see any questions coming in yet. So um, let me just pose a, a hypothetical question. Okay. When you're, this is kind of tied into what Anne Marie and I were talking about last night. Um, when you're dealing with a situation where stuff is taking a long time to show up, Anne-Marie was suggesting that there are times where it just takes source energy or the universe or whatever label you want to apply, just take some time to deliver it. And that you know, sometimes you just have to be a little patient. And I took the position that Abraham takes, which is that uh, they aren't really fans of patience and that um, really the only thing that's ever holding anything up is our resistance and our blocks and so forth, and that even when it seems like the uh, universe is taking a while because it has to kind of get everything all lined up, that's still, I was taking the position that that's still our resistance saying, well, you know what, I, I think it's just gonna take a while because it's hard to get this thing to line up, and so it does. So I'm curious, what's your position on that? Because I mean, this is like one of those gray areas you could, you really um, can't give a wrong answer, I don't think, but. I am on line with uh, Abraham on that. I feel like mm -hmm. you, you know, you could make a million dollars in 10 years or 10 minutes. It mm. just depends on where your flow is. Because there are people that make $10 million in 10 minutes. You know what yeah. I mean? It happens, like, sure. That, you know, there's people that are just at that level financially or, or anything. And just an example, I mean, this is just a small thing. But, like, today um, I was getting, I'm on, because I'm a reseller, I'm on a lot of, like, 
murder sites and stuff like that on Facebook. Right. And uh, actually, it was somebody that my husband went to high school and she lives in Portland. And um, she had a Christmas tree, a pre-lit Christmas tree that she just wanted to get rid of and she put on one of these sites. And I'm like, hey, I'd take it, but um, I'm in Vancouver, you're in Portland, so, you know, just give it to somebody else. And she's like, no, my son-in-law lives or works in, in Vancouver, I can get it over there. I'm like, cool. And oh, so, nice. so yeah, so I'm, I'm next year, I want to have a big Disney tree. I just want to put all Disney stuff on a, a tree. A Disney tree. Oh, you, so you're like my wife. She, like, she likes to do specialty trees. You like to do specialty trees. Yeah, yeah, I've never done it before, but I was kind of inspired by a post that went around this year. A bunch of people tagged me in it because they knew that I really like Disney. So I was like, my husband always insists on getting a real tree. And so I said, well, I'm going to get my fake tree, and I'm going to just do it all <laughs> Disney. So we'll have two trees. So anyways, um, so... I'm supposed to meet this guy at his work and I'm supposed to do it after I pick my son up from school and it's kind of close to where his school is. And so I'm just kind of fretting over, okay, I, just, I need to go to and pick up a prescription. I need to go to the post office and drop off a bunch of packages and how am I going to time all this so I can get there when he gets off work. So I'm not keeping him waiting. So I'm just like, you know, going, having a little monkey mind, like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Should I leave her? And I just stopped myself and I said, no, it's going to happen better than expected. Knock it off. It'll all just flow. I'm like, and then I just went up and like, I, like not even an hour later, I checked my phone and he's texted me and he's like, I got off work early. Can you please text, text me your address so I can just drop it off at your house? Nice. So it's just like, like little things like that. Like I was ready. I was just like, no, this is gonna be easy. I need to stop fretting about every little detail about, you know, like nothing's gonna go horribly wrong with this afternoon, you know? <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's just like things like that. Like I just put it out there and let it go and it just happened. So that can happen. But if I would have been pushing for that, like, oh, I wish he would just drop it off at my house. Why do I have to go get it? You know, like, I would never do that anyways, because I'm getting a free tree. But, <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but, but you know what I mean? Like, you can yeah. just, like, push, 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 and push. And then, and then you're just like, why is it not happening? It's like, right. because you're just pushing so hard and you're being, you know, rotten about it, you know? So, so I just feel like the, the whole thing with the blocks, what, what comes into play with that is just, um, I feel like from like conception, where you guys were talking about that this morning, mm -hmm. like from conception, we are getting energy from our mothers. And then as we develop in utero, I think that we can hear things and we can feel the emotions that are going on around us. and you know, we come out into the world and we learn to, um, we learn to behave certain ways, you know, as we, as we start learning the rules and, you know, what you can and can't do and how much you can get away with. And, you know, as you grow up and, you know, for some of us, you know, we've, we've had a lot of freedom to explore all of that. And for others of us, we've been beaten down literally, you know, we have parents that, that didn't put up with, anything and so you learn all those things and you hear about what money means to to those people you learn about how relationships are supposed to go you learn about you know where's a good place to live or you know you learn about friendships and relationships with other people and and then you take that with you and you don't even realize when you're when you are older you know you have then you you come into adulthood with all of these beliefs, but you know, like most of them aren't even yours, you know? Yeah, that's true. And th that's the tricky thing about blocks because very often they can show up in areas that we aren't even aware of because right. they were trained into us. Now, that's just one kind of block, but it can show up and, and we don't, we don't even know it's there. You have to kind of, um, keep your antenna up and and be aware that there's you're getting a signal that you're getting some kind of a clue that you know this is like a recurring pattern or something like that to to let you know that you're you're running into a block that was kind of pre-programmed into you without, without your knowledge so that's like one of the things you have to do in order to 
um, to, to deal with blocks. Uh, the other thing that I noticed about blocks is resistances is that um, you, you were alluding to it when you were talking about how you um, choose to, you know, pre, you, you kind of pre-plan the idea that everything's going to go right instead of the idea that everything's going to go wrong. And right. when you do that, that and I, I want to run this by you to see what you think. I had, I'm of the opinion that when you do that, what you're actually doing is you're, you're, you're directing the universe to help you move your resistances down, to basically move the blocks out of the way and lower the resistance levels, even if you don't know that they're there. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of like my explanation about why it is that when we're in that, what Abraham calls the high flying place on that high flying disc, we're feeling really, really good. We're feeling happy and positive, and then we're putting out there what result we want to have. That's when it's easier for source energy to deliver stuff to us through um, the path of least resistance to get it to us. And I'm suggesting that when when we're in that place, it's not just that we ourselves are in a path of least resistance, but I think some of the resistances that we have, kind of always in the way, get melted, get kind of dissolved away. And, mm -hmm. and that's, it, it kind of creates its own path of resist, least resistance in order to deliver stuff to us. I mean, what do you think? Am I, am I crazy or does that sound like it's reasonable? No, I think that's reasonable. I think that when you, like when I said that, when I just like stopped myself and said, no, this is gonna happen better than I expect, two things happen. I'm, I open myself up to however it's gonna happen. It doesn't matter. It's just gonna be better than I expect it. So I'm not mm -hmm. like, I'm, at no time was I like, God, I hope he just brings it over to the house. I was just like, no, it'll just, you know, I'll, I'll end up going and doing my stuff and it'll be just perfect timing and it all happen the way it's supposed to. And then, so number one, I'm not saying how it's going to happen. I'm just going, it's going to happen better than expected. And then number two, I'm letting it go. And I, I think I've talked about this before when you put an order in, when you're at a restaurant, you know, you don't, you don't keep stopping every busboy and every waitress going, um, you remember I want a cheeseburger and French <laughs> right, fries? Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, and when you're and when you're when you're doing your affirmations and you're going through all these exercises to use the law of attraction to your advantage, some people get so tied up in that. Like and that's pretty much what they're doing if you think about it. You know, like the, the if you think about it being a restaurant, every every time you even have a little bit of resistance, like you look down at the table and your food's not there, you're like, whoa, 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 where's my food, you know? You know, and so when you go to a restaurant, you order the food and then you just, yeah, you're looking forward to it. You know it's coming, you might be really hungry, you might be really looking forward to something special that you ordered or whatever, but, but you get in conversation with whoever you're sitting with and you, you know, are looking out the window and enjoying, you know, whatever scenery is outside or whatever. and and so when you just get into that kind of flow and just knowing that it's coming and having that unwavering knowing and faith that it's coming and then when it comes you know your your hamburger might get there and they might you know well we made extra fries and we put them on your plate because we you know what i mean like like mm -hmm. that stuff happens you know and then you're just like oh well that was cool you know yeah. and so i think i think it opens you up to to less resistance because you just know it's coming and then not how it's going to come. Right. I think so many people get tied up in how it's going to come. How, how am I going to make more money? How am I going to find my soulmate? How am I going to, you know, have a better car? And then they get blinders on and then they can't even see all the opportunities that are going on around them. And right. No, it's true. It's very true. And uh, along these lines, we actually have our first question from Colleen who asked, probably the most uh, basic question of all, it's, it gets right to the heart of it. How do you reprogram to remove blocks? And yeah, that's one of the big things you have to do. So how do you reprogram? What Do you have any particular techniques you use? Um, well, the one tech, I've used two techniques. So I had a phobia with earthquakes because we had a really big earthquake in my hometown back in the early 90s and just scared the daylights out of me and ever after that every time i would just feel a little bit of a tremor i would just go into complete phobic panic mode mm -hmm. like all right like yeah and it just you know and it's just like this isn't okay you know like i ran out of that when marley was two weeks old i ran out of the house without him you know and it was just like that's messed up like get yourself together and i ended up 
to get through that, I did tapping, mm -hmm. which is it's called emotional freedom technique. And I yep. and I and I did it with a professional who knew what they were doing and and specifically sat there with me and did did the whole the whole routine. And then the other thing that I've done is, um, and I've mentioned her before, Christy Marie Sheldon. She's kind of an intuitive um, block clearer, but she has some videos on YouTube. And I've gone through, I haven't bought her program, but I have gone through some of her free videos. And I don't know how much of it was cleared, but it made me conscious of what my financial blocks were. Mm. And so when I was in a position where I was like, should I say yes to that or should I act on that? I would go, oh yeah, it's okay because that's not my issue. That was my dad's issue or my mom's issue or, you know, my family's issue or whatever. And it's okay for me to take on that responsibility or that opportunity or whatever. And so, um, and to do that, it's pretty simple. You can just put yourself, I mean, I guess it's not totally simple. A lot of people have hard time meditating, but I just picture it, the way she did is she just has you expand your soul basically to the universe. You just start out with like expanding it in the room and then as big as your house and as big as your town. And, you know, pretty soon you're just engulfing the universe with your, that was just kind of how she got you in that, in that state of just all being connected. And then she would just say, you know, okay, now that you're here, you can start asking your unconscious mind questions and the first thing that pops in will be the answer. So then she had you, you know, like if she deals with financial goal, goals for the most, or financial blocks for the most part. And so she would just say, you know, what was, whatever your belief was like, okay, money's hard to get. Where did you get that? And immediately you get an answer. You know, it was from my dad. I was four years old. Uh, you know, he, he went through bankruptcy or what, you know, whatever it is, you know, and then you're, and, and then on a conscious level, you can go, oh, so that's why dad was always so scared and so, you know, tight with his money and scared to spend it because he went through bankruptcy or he went, you know, or his, his dad belittled him for his finance, you know, what, you know, like you, you can just learn those things and then you can just be conscious of them. But there's definitely um, fast tracks to that. And the tapping was really good for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I just feel like with something like that, it's, re it's really helpful to have a professional there with you kind of guiding you through it. Because mm -hmm. everybody okay. has their, their personal, you know. Yeah, no, I agree. Experience, so. I, 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 I think it actually depends, from my perspective, it depends what you, what, what the nature of the block is. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that because Whenever I run into a block of my own, I, I kind of ask myself intuitively, what's this all about and what's it going to take to clear it? Mm -hmm. and sometimes, I, sometimes I don't know. But on those occasions, most, most times I get some sort of a clue what to do about it. And on those occasions where I do get a clue, the clue usually tells me, you know, what technique to use. Probably the one that I use most often is actually one I learned from Wendy Dillard, who used to do the afternoon podcast with me. Um, she basically takes advantage of what we talked about a moment ago, about how when you're in a really good frame of mind, the universe, source energy, whatever, finds a way to help dissolve some of the, the, uh, the blocks that are in the way and, and speed up how stuff is going to get delivered. So what she would do is she would get herself into a really good frame of mind and you know just as, as happy and as, as positive and, and clear as she can be. And once there, she would take a look at whatever the block was that she identified, or at least noticed that it was there. And, and maybe the first question would be to identify what it was, you know, what causes it or where it might come from or that kind of thing. And then she just kind of play with it from that, that high flying position. And in the process of playing with it, it would almost always just kind of dissolve, kind of playing on what we talked about earlier, taking advantage of when you're in that, that really good feeling place, it just kind of falls apart after a while. Um, mm -hmm. So. I, I I do try to use that. I, I I don't really do it as well as she does it. Wendy's amazing. I mean, seriously, she not only is she great at doing that that kind of process, but she has the most amazing inner dialogue with her inner Wendy of, of anybody that I've ever talked with. I mean, she gets entire paragraphs 
she gets entire conversations and I, I'm blown away by that. I'm lucky yeah. if I can get if I can get a signal of yes, I like that or no, I don't like that, that's a good thing for me. That means I yeah. actually got a you know, a message. Her, I mean she could she could write, you know, five paragraphs of prose based on what what it is that she's getting. So it's really amazing what she does. But you don't have to be that intuitive. All you have to do is just kind of tap into it from that high flying position. And that's the key. If you're in that, that really good feeling position, that's where that technique works well. If you're not in a really good feeling position, I wouldn't try to do any technique if you're not in a really good feeling position. But if you're yeah. not in a really good position, I think that's where it really becomes valuable to do one of the Abraham processes that are in the back of the Ask and It Is Given book to get yourself into a better feeling place before you even try to go after a block. Because if you try yeah. to clear a block when you're not feeling good, God, those things, they just hang on like nothing. You know, they, they just hang on like like nobody's business and you, you can just go after them and after them. you're pounding your head against them and they don't move they don't go anywhere and it's because you're not in a good feeling place so i more than a technique i mean my question perhaps was, was a little bit unfair because it's really more than a technique it's about where you're coming from emotionally if you're in a good feeling place almost any technique is going to work if you're not in a good feeling place good luck <laughs> it's going to be I think that you that the techniques you use you have to believe in too. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, because like like while we're while you're talking, I'm you know I I read tarot cards, so there's sometimes when I'm just in a spot and I'm just like I'll just shuffle through my deck and pick a card and go oh okay that's the direction I need to go. Well, not all people are going to be open to that. You know, they're going to be like yeah that's kind of woo woo or whatever. You know? <laughs> right. So, That'd probably be one. I'd be one of those people. I actually played with uh, tarot cards many, many years ago, and and I I had such a, a ho hum experience with them that I have no confidence at all. So that would probably not be a technique for me to use. But you have right, confidence, right. and that's what makes the difference. If you have the confidence, it it certainly yeah, works. Yeah, because I'm not because the cards for me are just kind of tapping into my intuition. It's not like this magic, you know, fortune telling thing. It's just like it for me. The cards are just kind of like. A little bit of a guide and I find like what you're talking about like what what Wendy Dillard was able to do for herself I find that I'm really good at doing that for other people but when yeah. it comes to myself you know because I can be in a really crappy place in my life you know and bitching and complaining about everything and my well, kids exactly. are like yeah. you know, the kids are like mom you just need to be happier and I'm like shut up you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're like, mom, that's what you would say I'm like oh well you know I mean I guess we're all pretty good at telling other people how they should of course it's so much but, easier <laughs> yeah. but it's it's amazing when you can tap into that for yourself and it sounds like she's really good at that and that's awesome she really is yeah well she's also a, a life coach she describes herself as a transformational coach so that's like a key portion of what she does with her coaching but yeah it's yeah. I, I love I loved how you mentioned how if you're in that that kind of crappy place and you gave a beautiful example of it too um that it, it's it's a tough go. It's it's really tough doing stuff there. You you mentioned uh, using the EFT, the emotional freedom technique, tapping. Um, do you uh, you said that you did it with a professional? Do you do it for yourself? Do you use that technique for yourself? I have a little bit, but it didn't. It like there's a couple you know YouTubers that do it, and they'll do it on all different things or whatever. But I just feel like I'm just. When I tap along with them, they're just talking about, you know, oh, well, you have a certain block against, you know, a good relationship or whatever, and and you have to love yourself anyways. And, you know, it's just like right. when that professional went through the whole earthquake with me, she brought me right back to that spot, you know, and she was like, well, what what were your thoughts when that was happening? And I was like, I thought a lot of people died. Because uh, I saw I saw these transformers blowing, but I but I thought that they were explosions. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, they are loud. They're loud. They're very scary when they yeah when they yeah. And so and so I remember looking at my mom. I mean, I was 22, you know, but I, but but look, I was I was still living at my mom's house, and my mom and I both hit the the front door when it happened. And I remember after it stopped, just looking at her and going, I think a lot of people just died. So that's what I was in that high emotional scared state and that was my belief that when there's an earthquake lots of people die and it's something to 
to be super scared of. So that was such a personal experience for me that I think when you're trying to do EFT and you're just doing these general tappings or whatever, I just, I don't feel like I know enough about it to do it for myself, to make it work for myself. And that's why I just felt really confident with this woman that helped me because she, she like, her specialty is she's a, she's a vet, a veteran, and she um, helps veterans with PTSD get through that. Yeah. yeah. So, and so basically what that was, was PTSD for me. You know, yeah. every time there was an earthquake, I thought everybody was going to die. And it wasn't even, I knew consciously, no, you know, like two people died in that earthquake. One, a rock came off a mountain and smashed a car and a, and a like 90 year old woman had a heart attack because it scared her so bad. But right. nobody died from those transformers blowing. You know, nobody's house collapsed on them. No, you know, it's just like, so, and I knew that consciously, but my unconscious mind knew that a lot of people died and you should be super scared of earthquakes. So that's where that block was. I couldn't think rationally. And that's where blocks come from financially or with relationships or with material items or whatever your blocks are, you know, that's where that comes in is that unconscious mind is keeping you safe. Like you heard your mom when you were two, you heard your mom say, you know, all men are, you know, pieces of blah. And, you know, you're just like, and, and, and that, and you saw how upset she was and it scared you and you were in this high emotional state, even as a toddler, like what's wrong with mom? And you're hearing about how horrible men are. And then you go into life like that and you're like, why can't I find a good man? Well, because all men are jerks. I, mm. I got that at two years old and I don't even know that that happened. Yeah. You know, you know, she might find an, a man in a couple of years and live happily ever after and she was just in a highly emotional state and and fed that to you and and then you wonder why you can't ever find a good man and that's why and you have to find those little nuggets or whatever and get rid of them you know so you can have those those happy times and and those will just keep bringing you back like i said you know your unconscious mind goes well all men are jerks or all earthquakes kill a whole bunch of people so that it just keeps bringing you back to that so that's where it's really important to get rid of those blocks you know yeah, i agree with you that that is a great description of an example of a hidden block that we didn't really know was there and mm -hmm. that, you're right that's a, that is a time when it's useful to have a professional helping you out kind of guide you through very often we have strong negative emotionally based uh, associations with these hidden events and mm -hmm. because we're trying to make sense out of them I mean emotions when especially when our emotions are not clear to us what it is what we're feeling or why we're feeling it or, or, or whatever that's where it's useful to have somebody else to kind of help walk us through it because we're trying mm -hmm. to deal with the emotion we don't our, our rational mind isn't really engaged at that point which it shouldn't be because you need to be dealing with the emotional side of it and that's what where that outside perspective really helps a whole lot so I, I understand why you want to have that help. That makes sense to me. Um, the thing that I've noticed about, um, and by the way, this is a Q and A. So uh, we we did get that one question from Colleen, but we we aren't done there. If, you know, if you have questions and you're listening to the live stream, by all means, uh, share your questions in the comments section on Facebook on our LOA Today page, and we'll be glad to address them. Um, but uh, where I was going was, um, I, I I kind of described with Anne Marie last night that it's possible for us to request something and there are any number of blocks in the way of various kinds for various stages of the delivery path for lack of a better term and we may not know what they all are some of them may be invisible to us some of us some of them we may know about we've dealt with them before and we never really successfully cleared them or partially cleared them or something like that so we have all these little blocks that are in the way that to me is probably the most challenging part about it is First of all, you don't really know how many blocks are in the way. Hopefully there's only one or maybe two because it makes it a lot easier if you only have one or two. But if you've got more than that, it can be kind of confusing because you, you, you go to work on block number one and maybe it's a big one. Maybe it's something that's been hanging around since you were two, like you were describing. And then you clear it and you say, oh, great, I just cleared it. And then it still doesn't show up. You say, well, wait a minute, I cleared the block. What's going on here? 
is because mm-hmm. there's another block in the way. And, and that's, that's probably the thing that defeats most people more often than anything else, having not just one block, but multiple blocks and not realizing it and not knowing what to do about it. Have you run right. into that? Personally? Mm-hmm. Um, I think a little bit. I mean, I had I had some real big this last year. I've I had some real big financial blocks moved, and you know, I kind of give Christy Marie Sheldon's you know um, technique some credit for that because it really felt like that. And there was a couple other YouTubers that I watched that you know talk a lot about finances and and you know, but but there's still you know, I keep getting pulled back and I'm and so my question right now for myself is, am I getting pulled back because there's another block I need to get through or am I getting pulled back because I'm just falling back into old habits, which I guess could be the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's two ways of saying the same thing. Yeah. I, I, I thought about it in terms of my own situation on a number of things that I'm working on now and that I've worked on in the past uh, where, you know, Kind of along the lines of what I just described, I, I clear something. You know, I find a block and I clear it, and yet the thing isn't showing up. And I'm asking myself, well, well, now what is it? What could it possibly be? And as you're going through a journey where you're experiencing, you know, okay, here's one block I cleared. Here's another one I cleared. Here's another one I cleared. As you clear them, things start to shift, obviously, because that we we just reduced the resistance of the overall path. And they start to shift in ways where experientially, you ask yourself, well, why did that happen? It doesn't seem connected to any of the things that you've been asking for, but there's all of a sudden this shift, this thing that happened. Um, I'm thinking right now of, of when Louise and I moved from Connecticut, I'm sorry, from Virginia back to Connecticut after living in Virginia for 11 years. Uh, and we actually wrote about this in the uh, the book that we published last May. The, the story was a multifaceted story because it involved moving out of, uh, to a new state, a uh, new job for Louise. Um, our cars were both worn out, both needed to be replaced. We had just inherited four cats. We can only take two of them with us. And we were doing all this with not enough money. So th- there was like a whole bunch of stuff that was all all tied together in this, in this <laughs> knotted ball of yarn. <laughs> it was kind of a mess. Right. And while we're going through it, uh, th- there were any number of instances along the way where where we would successfully, I'll call it clear a block or re- remove a resistance level, and then the storyline would shift. But it wouldn't seem to shift in a way that would solve any of the problems. We'd say, well, well, now what do we do with that? You know, mm-hmm. uh, like uh, the example that comes to my mind for that particular story is we had driven up from Virginia to Connecticut to A, try to find a place to live, and B, to find a job for Louise. And we came up in October of 20, what year was it? I guess it was 2013. Um, and when we got here, we went to uh, the same apartment complex that we used to live in to the people who own that one and, and tried to find out were there any apartments available. We'd actually uh, checked in advance, found out there was one and drove up here with the idea, okay, we're gonna meet with the maintenance guy. He's gonna show us the apartment. We can sign off on it. We'll be good to go. Got up here and the apartment was gone. Not only was the apartment gone, but the maintenance guy didn't even respond to our phone calls. So on the day we were supposed to meet with him, he's, you know, he's gone, he's, he's, he's unreachable. And we're sitting mm-hmm. here like, well, we just drove up 550 miles to get here, <laughs> or whatever it was. It was a long yeah. trip, you know? And we're thinking, well, how does this help us with our agenda? Actually, it was clearing a space that I can see now, but at the time, that just seemed like a major defeat. And on yeah. top of that, She'd had a job interview. We went to the job interview and she hated it. So we actually drove back from Connecticut to Virginia with no job and no apartment and even less money than we had before, still trying to figure out how we're going to pay for the whole move. No. When you're in the middle of something like that, you say to yourself, I'm not gaining ground, I'm losing ground. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like, right? As it turned out, we were actually gaining ground. We just didn't know it. Um, right. What happened was about two months later, uh, we. We didn't know what else to do, so we just drove north again in uh, January. Actually, it was in December. And when we drove north the second time, the contact we had made the first time about finding the apartment had led us to another contact, which led us to a realtor who was the guy who originally sold the land to the landlord who had built all these apartments. It wouldn't have happened if we hadn't had that first visit. 
Right. And on top of that, this guy not only knew the landlord, but he also knew all the properties he sold to him, including one that we didn't know about. He said, well, did you ask about this property? And we said, what property? We never heard of that one. And of calling the landlord back the next day, do you have any apartments? Now, now we had just called the apartment uh, uh, office earlier that, that day that we talked to the realtor. That very mm -hmm. same day we called them up, they said, no, there are no apartments at the complex. Call them up the next day and ask them about this other complex that we never heard about. Oh yeah, there's two apartments available there. Now, why didn't they tell us about those the first day? I have no idea. But because of that chain of events, we knew to ask about that apartment. And sure enough, it was there, and that's the one we ended up getting. So now all of a sudden, we had an apartment where before we didn't have one. There's no way that could have happened if we hadn't had the, the failure the first time around, or what seemed like a failure. Right. And the resistance that, was, that I associate with that is we went um, on that first trip, and I tell you, I wasn't feeling good about it at all. I had mm -hmm. no confidence. I mean, I had been studying Law of Attraction for a few years, but I really didn't get the, have the handle on it yet. I didn't have a feel on it. Um, I'd been doing the podcast for about a year, but I'd actually taken, a, taken some time off for a few months because I'd run out of guests and... I just didn't know where to go with it. It, I mean, it, it, it seemed more like a, oh, it, it seemed like an egotistical exercise than anything else. It didn't seem like it was going anywhere, you know? So, yeah. I, and I didn't have a whole lot of confidence in how the whole thing would work. I mean, sometimes it seemed like it would work. Most of the time it didn't work. And I didn't understand why we were in this, this financial pickle we were in. And I mean, you know, I wasn't in a good frame of mind at all. Louise, I'm not sure what her frame of mind was. I think it was probably pretty good because she was the one who was really enthusiastic about moving back to Connecticut much more than I was. Um, but I know that that frame of mind didn't help much. By the time, now here's the interesting part. By the time the second visit came along, my frame of mind hadn't improved a whole lot except for one key detail. I'd kind of thrown in the towel because I couldn't figure out how, you talked about the house, trying to avoid the house. It's not like I consciously avoid the house. It's like, I give up, I can't figure out the house. I quit. That was the attitude I had taken. Yeah. And so it actually put me in a less resistant place so that when we right. went to trip, everything started to flow into place. And I'm thinking, what the hell is happening here? I don't understand yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, like I, the whole time you were saying that, like when people ask me, they're just like, everything's going wrong and I don't know what to do. And I'm just like, just stop. Like just stop and go do something that makes you feel better. I don't care if it's a round of golf or a bowl of ice cream or, you know, uh, take your dog for a walk or go watch a TV show. Like, go do something that is going to be the total opposite of what you're pushing against, you know? And and like you said, like, just give up on it. Like, I, I was just on a live call with, or not live call, but a uh, uh, another reseller did a live video today and she's just burnt out and she's like literally crying on the video, you know, and it's just like, and I don't know her very well. Like I, I, some of the other resellers that I know pretty well and I'm just like, I don't know you, but I sure would love to give you a hug right now, you know, and I'm just like, go do something that you enjoy. Like don't, don't, don't try to keep listing and taking photographs and pushing yourself so hard. Like just, you know, take a day and go do something else. Like, like because in number one, in that state of mind when you're frustrated and irritated and and you just feel so icky and it, whatever you do is just going to go the opposite direction. It's like mm -hmm. the whole Abraham thing where you're just paddling upstream. You're just paddling and paddling and paddling and not going anywhere. It's just like let go. Mm -hmm. You might hit a few rapids. But you won't be, you know, you'll you'll still get to the bottom and it'll be fine, you know. And, and rapids and, is the correct word. Seriously, yeah. rapids exactly is what the correct word because the rest of that story that I was telling you that was December, um, and we remember that trip back from Connecticut to Virginia after she had gotten the apartment. Um, actually, the same day that we got the apartment, she also got a job interview and got the job. So we had all that straightened out at one point. And, and we're feeling like, oh, well, maybe this actually can work out. Still didn't know how we were going to pay for all of it, but I felt like, hey, at least something's working. It made me feel better, you know, kind of along the lines you were talking about. And we remember that trip back because we left Connecticut. <laughs> this is weird. We left Connecticut. It was uh, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. 
we were driving down through Pennsylvania. When we got to Pennsylvania, the temperature had plummeted to zero. And by the time oh. we got to Virginia, it was in the minus territory. So it's like this huge plunge. We're watching the thermo, you know, how the cars they have a thermometer on, telling you what the temperature yeah. is. We're watching it go down, 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 down. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? We were just having this really good day, and now all of a sudden we're going downhill again. And, you know, showing that my frame of mind wasn't really in a strong frame of mind. But there was at least enough good feeling there that when we got home, it gave us enough of a clear path for a whole bunch of other things to happen. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I won't tell the whole story because it's a very involved story, but I'll, I'll give you like the broad brush of it. We had two weeks to move uh, because we had to get back in time for her to take her new job. In that two week period, we not only came up with the money to make the move, hired the movers, arranged to get our two dying cars up here, um, had to sell one of them at the last second because uh, I was pretty sure it wasn't going to make it anyway. On the day we sold it, it was out of oil entirely, and the buyer bought it anyway. On the day of the move, the, the, the other car was supposed to be towed behind the, move, the moving van. The moving van owner comes up and says, no, we can't tow it. So now we have this car. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do with it. One of his team buys the car on the spot. We, we have a rental car. They, they pack the, the truck up. They take off for Connecticut. We pack the cats. That, two of the cats we had to take to a shelter. The other two we were taking with us. Pack them in the car. Pack the remaining stuff in the car. This is a rental car. We're driving north. We realize we don't own a car. We have no vehicle to our name. We get up to Connecticut. They move us in. We go out to go, go sh car shopping. And the second car dealer we go to gets us into two brand new cars at approximately one third to one half off their normal price. All that happened yeah. in a two week period. It was yeah. the craziest damn roller coaster ride I've ever had in my life. And as we're riding it, we're saying, what What the hell is going on? <laughs> What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> it was that kind of a feel to it. I know now if I had understood better the importance of being in that high flying place and staying there regardless of what's going on, it would have been a much less chaotic trip. And right. I suspect probably the same thing was true with Louise, even though she was more enthusiastic about the move than I was. I think she was still feeling the stress of it. In fact, I know she was because when we when it came time to writing that for the book, she couldn't even handle going back and looking at it again to write the story. I had to write the story. So it was definitely affecting both of us for sure. But yeah. if we'd been in a better flying place, I'll bet you that everything would have been much more smooth than it was and, and a lot less of a roller coaster. But nevertheless, you can see how I, we had just released enough resistance that the universe found ways to, to clear the path and get us to the result that we needed to have. And oh, by the way, the uh, four cats, two of which we kept, the other two we had to take to a shelter. We ended up getting homes for them, so that turned into a happy ending as well. Nice. <laughs> it was nice. wild. Yeah. Yep. So. That's um, awesome. Jeffrey has. Uh, just sent on notice thanking us for uh, um, sharing the stories. He says it gives him a humorous look into the possibilities of the future. Yeah, humorous when you're not actually in the middle of it. It's very funny when you're looking on the outside. It's not so much fun when you're in the inside, but yeah, it is fun and they're funny stories. Um, and Valerie is saying hello to you. I, I, I kind of guess you know Valerie. Yeah, yeah. Don't have any other questions that I'm seeing. Um, this is a Q&A, so feel free to ask questions um, in, by typing them into the comments section, or even join us on the, the Blue Jeans platform. There's a link in the description there if you're listening to the live stream. Um, obviously, if you're listening to the recorded podcast, can't really do that so much, but you can do what others have done, because we have gotten emails and, and people filling in the form on the contact page of our website, LOAToday.net. And we, we bring those up on the show too. So either way, even if it's not going to be on today's podcast, you can always just reach out to us and we'll include it on a future podcast. Um, but uh, you know, feel free to include any questions if you're listening to the live stream and we'll include them here. In the meantime, we'll just go back to our storytelling and sharing our experiences and so forth with blocks and resistances. I mean, do you, do you have a favorite go-to story of yours that you, you think of whenever you're thinking about what it takes to remove a resistance or a block, something that's gotten in the way, something that has been hanging over you, maybe something from childhood, maybe something recent. I mean, it could be almost anything, but. Anything come to I, mind? I think that I've told the story the story before about my my tires. Well, I guess I guess it's just, that's just like a little thing, like what happened today. Like I just I don't know. I think just the financial thing for me was 
was the biggest thing. Like we, you know, my marriage is great, you know, kids keep you going, but you know, I have good relation, you know, even when things get rocky with the kids, it always ends good. Cause you know, mm-hmm. we just, that's, we're just, you know, an I love you drive safe kind of family, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, but, but the money thing was just always the thing. And, and as far as blocks go, like that's been my biggest clearing of the blocks, you know, and when I, when I was, when I was talking to the gal that did the, the EFT, the tapping with me, she had come, the reason I met her is because I went to like a weekly law of attraction group when I first moved up into this area and Mm -hmm. she would come and be like the special guest and she would just talk to us about it and stuff. And I just remember it clicking for me because you know, I knew that the subconscious mind could hold you back and keep you, you know, you could have these blocks, but I didn't understand why it did that. Like, why would it, you know, you hear people like winning the lottery and then, you know, two years later, they're back to paycheck to paycheck because they just blew it all or whatever. Right. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, and I'm just like, why does that happen? And she and she just looked at me and she goes, because it keeps you safe. That's, yes. what, that's what it's doing. It's keeping yeah. you safe. So you think yeah. that you that that you want that, but but and you do consciously you want it. You know that that lottery winning or that you know beautiful new house or that amazing new body is going to make you happy. But you have a program, just like you put programs in your computer you have a program that is telling you you can't have that body or you can't have that relationship. And it's not because it's a cruel, you know, like there's something wrong with you and your subconscious is mean. It's because there was some experience that you had and some influence that you had that, that made you believe that on a, on a very emotional level, you know, like, like I have, I have a lot of overweight women in my family and I've heard that all throughout my life, you know, Oh yeah, this is just how we are. But then I look at my grandma, the the mom of these, you know, women, and she was as skinny as rail her whole life. So it's like, <laughs> like how is, how is, is, then that's not true. You know what I mean? Right. And I don't even real, I don't even really understand why, I guess just because they're they're influential people in my life and I've been hearing it since I was a little kid and seeing it, you know, that you just get to that belief point, you know, that that yeah, you know, you're you're going to be overweight because you're part of this family, get over it, you know. And it's and how those stories can they, they they kind of evolve almost on a myth-like basis, they become a family myth that just carries on right. and can actually carry on gener- generationally, which is where it really becomes kind of stuck in and, and can take even more time to root it out. But yeah, that, that, that's something Louise has told me about quite a bit because I, I don't know if I told you, she was a psychotherapist for 10 years and did a lot of uh, work with the family issues. She was a marriage and family therapist. And uh, the, the, the stories that she would tell me really mm-hmm. underlined how generationally stuff carries along. I mean, in this case, it, it, with your family, it sounds like it was just this is this first generation, which was probably good because it probably makes it easier for, for for your family members to figure out what's going on there. Um, but right. for some people who have it for generation after generation, like alcoholism carrying on for three, four, or five generations, I mean, you, you get to the point where you, you can hardly even clear the original problem, whatever it is, because it's so deeply buried in there. You basically have to deal with the symptom of, well, you're an alcoholic. What are you going to do about being an alcoholic? You know, yeah. go through the day and all that kind of stuff, because it's just so deeply ingrained. Unless you've got a really good EFT person, but, <laughs> you know, or, or somebody like Linda Armstrong who who clears all your energies from all years and all generations and every aspect of your life and being for you know thirteen hundred lives before or whatever it is. But um, yeah. yeah, it can be quite the challenge, no doubt about well, it. Well, the story that I think about that's kind of humorous with that, and I don't remember where I heard it, but it was like this this woman, she's she's making a ham for a family dinner and she cuts off the ends of the ham 
and she puts it in the pan she cooks it you know and her and her daughter watches her do this for years you know growing up like you know you when you make a ham you cut off the ends and so she she finally asks her you know mom why are you doing that she's like mm -hmm. um well i don't know that's what grandma did like you just that's what you're supposed to do when you cook a ham so they went to grandma and they're like why did you do that? And she said, because my pan wasn't big enough. <laughs> you know, and so, <laughs> like, yeah, so that's just like a, like a kind of silly example, but it's true. Like things yeah. like that, like recipes and cooking and techniques of life, you know, and, and so those things are just little and kind of silly, but, but so, but it, there's huge things. There's mm -hmm. huge things that you, that you can't believe on a unconscious level that are keeping you right where you're at absolutely yeah and, wow. and the key is to find those and figure out how to be conscious of them and how to clear them and give them back or you know whatever is best you know for you or whatever just to go oh that that has nothing to do with me that wasn't me that was their fear or their their hang up or you know it's great when you can get that look that to that level of um, what's going on generationally find out that yes it really was what mom was dealing with and that she was dealing with this issue and you can, right. you can get that level of detail that's powerful because that means you're going to eliminate that block pretty quickly Jeffrey has a question for us he says what are some blocks around money you have had and how did you get over or through them which is a good question a really good question because probably I, I don't know what you think but I found that the most common kind of difficulty that people have is attracting money um, mm -hmm. people, there are people who have trouble with relationships and there are people who have lots of money who have trouble with relationships or have trouble with health or whatever so it's not like there there's nobody who has other kinds of issues with attracting stuff using the law of attraction but i think money is number one and uh, yeah. i mean I, I don't think there's a whole lot of disagreement about that most of my coaches will agree with me on that one too so money i mean you went through that you you have direct experience with that um, anything you can share any tips or any ideas on, on how to break through? Well, I did a couple things. I, I figured out what my blocks were through doing some pretty simple meditation and just asking where they came from and how old I was when I heard them and what it was all about. And as soon as I was aware of those things, I would, it was just so much easier for me to, you know, when I would, I did have an opportunity to make money or, or, or think about money. I, I could start thinking about it in a different way. I could start feeling about it in a different way. And the other thing that just kind of went along with that was I just, there was a couple mantras or, you know, little sayings that I would, that I would say to myself because I would get, you know, when it was time to, I mean, things as simple as like, okay, I need to put lunch money in Marley's account at school, or I got to put gas in the tank, or, you know, the dog needs, you know, her shots or what, you know, things that are just going to be like, you know, 20 or 50 bucks here and there, like, you know, nothing, nothing major. I would find myself just get it like just in the pit of my stomach, like almost in my chest, just like kind of tightening up and just being like, oh, like, and, and I would stop myself and say two things. I would say, I say yes to money and I love money because it comes when I call it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like those things just kind of, um, those three things, knowing what my blocks were, saying yes to money and loving money all changed. And, and I was able to step back from those, from those emotional reactions that I would have about anything that came up, you know? And, and one of the, the examples, and I, I don't know if I've said this before about my, my tires on my van. You mentioned them one time, yes. Uh, yeah, so I just, you know, long story short, I needed new tires. I was fretting about it driving down the road as my van was literally shaking because the alignment was all messed up and the tires were messed up. And I was just finding myself just in that spot of just like, ah, you know, like, how the hell am I going to get the money to do this? Like, we don't have it. And, and I just stopped myself and I'm in the car alone. So I'm like, you know, talking out loud to myself and I'm like, no, it's all going to work out. It's going to be better than I expected. I love money. I say yes to money. 
And then I just let it go and turned up the radio and, and went on doing, running my errands and stuff. And literally, it wasn't even an hour later, I came home and checked the mail and our, the remainder of our rent deposit from our other house was in the mail. And it was exactly what we needed to put tires on the van. And, and, and in that moment, I wasn't going, oh my God, I can't, you know, it was like, oh, okay, 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 <laughs> it works. Like, this is, thank you, universe, this is yeah. awesome. Yeah. You know, I just, that little shift. And so I just started doing that with everything. And I ended up inheriting over $100,000 this last year. I Ooh. lost my I lost my grandma in the in the midst of it, mm. but, but she was, it, you know, like those things that just click and happen the way they're supposed to. Like she was literally about to go into a nursing home, which would have devastated her, oh, and right. and she was in the hospital and she passed away in the hospital. And and mm. everybody that was involved. I mean, I'm super sad. I had a really good relationship with her, um, but. But it was just one of those things where it was like it happened exactly the way it was supposed to happen, you know, mm -hmm. and and it happened at the right time. And, you know, I remember telling my my aunt who was in charge of her estate, you know, if I would have got this money a year ago, it would have been a disaster. You know, but I got it at the right time. I'm in the right frame of mind for it where we did, you know, we had some fun with it. We did some, you know paying off of things and stuff like that. I shared it with my brother, you know, and so, so it was just like, it, it just, you know, in that moment, I was just like, you know, of course I'm going to get over a hundred grand. Like, of course I am. Oh, that's <laughs> great. That's the right mindset. That's really yeah, good. Yeah. And I, um, I knew, my, I knew my grandma had money, but I had, and I, I was getting some, but I had no idea. And I was open to whether I got 20 grand or if I got, you know, several hundred. I was just open. I was just like, whatever it is, it's more than I have now. And I'm going to be so grateful for it. And, and you know, and it's just, you know, so as that money is starting to, to go away for different reasons, that's where I'm starting to get like tightened up a little again. And I have to go, no, 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 yes to money. I love money. Hey, we still have plenty. Like, I don't need to get all worked up about it. It's fine, you know. And what so, I was talking before about how there, there can be multiple blocks. This is what I mean by multiple blocks because right. I, I, we don't clear them all at once. We clear them over right. time. And that's what you've been doing. You've been yeah. clearing over time. And as you clear them, it becomes easier and easier to flow the money. And I've been, I've been going through the same thing. I mean, I can't say that I have completely licked the financial situation, oh, but it's gotten so much better. Um, yeah. and, and probably one of the biggest ones for me was, you, you alluded to it kind of indirectly, but for the longest time, it was always the money would show up at just the last possible second to save us. And it was yeah. like that, like clockwork, every year, year after year after year. And Louise pointed out to me that that was the case, and I said, well, yeah, I guess it is true, but boy, I'm sick of it. Yeah, <laughs> I really want that to stop, you know. So, so there I was identifying a block, and one of the things I've taken doing to alleviate that, I can't remember where I heard this. I picked it up someplace, but uh, somebody suggested that whenever a bill comes in, don't wait, pay it immediately, so that mm -hmm. you don't allow yourself to fret over the fact that the bill needs to be paid and where's the money going to come from. Just pay it with whatever money you've got and get it off your plate. I mean, I, I have a history of having the same kind of reaction with uh, taxes, the taxes you have to do every year. Um, not just mm -hmm. because of doing the income tax, but also because we both have businesses, so there's also the Schedule C's and all the stuff that goes along with yeah. that, and rolls and all that kind of craziness. You know, so I, I've had plenty of issues where, you know, um, emotionally I just have not been able to handle doing the taxes well, even though that's my task to do in the family. and. This year, I'm, I'm actually going to break the mold. I'm going to actually get the taxes done early. I kind of have to for a particular reason, but mm -hmm. I'm just getting it off my plate as fast as I can so I don't fret about it. And that, yeah. just even thinking about that, that helps. That just kind of removes a little bit more of that resistance. And that's re really what it's all about is one step at a time, one resistance level here, one here, one here. You just keep moving them, moving them, dissolving them, getting them out of the way, and eventually you run out. 
I think it's important when you're going through that process too of paying your bills or paying your taxes, it's important to be grateful for what those are going for. Yes. You know yes, what I mean? Right. Like like you're not just paying you're not just paying this bill that you have no idea what it's for and you don't you know you're paying your light bill and you're paying your water bill and you know when you turn on your faucet water comes out and when you turn on your light the light comes on and 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 so it's important to be to just get in that habit of everything that as much as when you're getting money and you're like oh thank you for that money when it goes back out thank you for that for that opportunity to let that money flow through me and to get this whatever in return you know, mm -hmm. and so, and I think the whole thing with, you know, how do you get it faster and everything, you have to realize too, this is just a journey. We're all on a journey and you have to make it as fun and happy as you can. And the more fun and the more happy you decide to be, because it's a choice, the faster things will come and the more fun and happy you'll be. So it's, it's a win-win, you know. We're actually a little bit over, but we got another good question. So I figure we'll bring this one in. We'll make this the last question for the night. Um, Jeffrey's asking, so how do we get over the idea that we have to work hard to make money? Because he's right. That is a, that's a big portion of, of what many of us have to deal with, with this feeling that we have to work hard. And yet, as Abraham points out, you don't have to, none of this has to be hard. You actually are better off making it as easy as you possibly can. So, I mean, what, what approach do you take for, for making it easy for yourself? So you don't feel like you have to um, work Yeah, well, I've never been really good at doing things I don't enjoy. Like mm. from a little kid, I've always, you know, picked the the easier, more fun path. You know, I, I didn't know that at the time, but that's what I've done, you know. Mm. And I, I've had businesses that I enjoy. I've had jobs that I don't enjoy, but, um, but you know, I, I don't last long in ones that I really hate because, but, but I think that number one, I, you have to work hard for money comes from blocks because that's coming from someone teaching you that that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And number two, I think it's important to find those people out in the world that are making plenty of money doing what they love and having a blast doing it. And it doesn't mean that like every second of the day, they're just in complete bliss and happiness, but they wake up every morning excited about what they get to do today. And I, that's how I feel like my life is. I, you know, there are days where I'm just like, uh, but for the most part, I, I get up and I'm, and I'm excited about what my day is going to bring. Right. And you have, you have to, you know, if you're working a job you don't like, or, or that it's a dead end job and it's not going to take anywhere financially. I think you have to start making the little changes to, you know, or you, do you want to be a football coach? Do you want to be a barista? Do you want to be a, you know, what a, a horse trainer? Whatever it is, start doing that. And, you, and it doesn't mean you have to quit your whole life and start over from scratch. It means that if you want to be a football coach, look on the websites of the local schools and see if that you know there's an assistant job that you can get into. If you want to be a horse trainer, you know, get a horse and start going to a stable or find a trainer that you can work under. What you know, like whatever, you can still do that and make that money that you're supposed to be making to pay all the bills that you're supposed to be paying right now. And there uh -huh. are and there That's are opportunities where you can just quit everything and drive off in the sunset. You know, not not all of us can do that because we have kids and, and mortgages and stuff. But even, even that, like my husband's little cousin, she just um, sold everything and her and her husband moved, moved with their two little kids to Thailand. And wow. they're living in Thailand. And, and, you know, you could, like, it's a choice. It is. That's a big like, step. That's a big choice right there. But yeah, you can look huge, at it's a huge step. And that's what I'm saying. Like so many people are like, well, I can't quit my job right now. You know, I got this mortgage. Well, don't quit your job, but go, go find a part time, you know, whatever that, you know, a job at a coffee shop or, you know, whatever. Uh, and I love what you, what you said about the importance of, of uh, finding something that you love. I mean, because you mm -hmm. mentioned that you can't do a job unless you like it, um, which I think is actually probably a very good thing. I did a lot of jobs over my lifetime that I was good at and in many cases made good money, 
but I didn't like it. I didn't really love it at all. I wasn't. I did it because I was good at it, not because I was loving it. And oh yeah. boy, that'll just wear you down. It just destroys you. Talk about creating a negative attitude. Does that ever yeah. create a negative attitude? So I'm totally on board with you. It's really important. And if you don't know what it is, I mean, I didn't know what mine was for the longest time. You know, when I found out what my first real passion was in life, when I started doing this podcast, up until then, I couldn't find anything. I literally had no idea what I would, what I could do that. I have, I have done, I have done so many things. Like it's the joke around the house. I'm, you know, like if one of the kids gets hurt or something, I'm like, well, I used to be a doctor. So let me look at it, you know, and they all laugh. <laughs> Because I have like done real estate. I've worked in a in a in a truck shop. I've I've worked in a call center. I've you know like I just have spent my life kind of playing through all these jobs. And I found reselling. I've been doing it for almost twenty years, and I love it. But I'm starting to get burnt out on that. And so I started. Now I'm training to be a travel agent, and I'm just doing it for fun. Like. I'm gonna do it for fun. I'm gonna do it to learn about, you know, to help people travel and to travel myself and to make, make some money on the way. And, you know, and it's just like, I'll try that. If, if sure. you know, and, and so far I'm having more fun doing that than I have with anything else I've tried in the last several years, you know, but it's, it's, you have to play a little with that. I, I, uh, I, I just have to mention one other note here. Lems uh, just tuned in and says he's in the Philippines and he's just having breakfast while watching us. So thank you for Aww. joining us during breakfast. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Fortunately, we're, we're, we're well past time. We're about six minutes yeah. past. So hopefully the folks at PRN won't get too upset that I gave them a show that's more than an hour long. But it's been well worthwhile. I mean, it took a while to get the questions coming, but they started coming hot and heavy toward the end there. And we had to get them all yeah. in. So that was good. But thank you for uh, bringing up this topic because blocks and resistance are a big deal for sure. And uh, yep. I think we barely, we barely touched the surface. We could probably do like five or six shows on it. But oh, yeah. yeah this is good. Yep. So thank you for that. And thank you for our uh, live stream listeners for sharing your questions and for tuning in. We really love you for that. And we will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.